Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight uh, for about an hour and uh, uh, at 8.30 p.m. So uh, that is 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And I'm here for about an hour and we just craft and we work on a project and I typically work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. So, and just come in to chat. That's, that's lovely too. <laughs> it is a fun just little hangout uh, for, for our little crafting party here. So we are working on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along and it is a hundred blocks that we will be putting into a quilt. We are on like our 47th or 48th block. So we, we got a little ways to go yet, but we are working on the shared squares block again tonight. So that's, it looks super intricate. All these squares are only six and a half inches big. So, uh, you yeah, know, here's one strip from it, itty bitty. And this will end up being like a square. That's about, that's about that big, right? <laughs> so dealing with lots of small pieces in this one, uh, it is foundation paper piece. Uh, that's the technique we're using and what that means is that we are sewing our fabric directly onto a foundation and it, uh, like a foundation something and that foundation is a paper printout here. So we have all we have all our instructions basically right on here uh, the order to sew and uh, we've been just kind of working through that. So we're doing uh, I'm gonna flip you guys around but we're gonna we're doing this a little bit differently than I normally do foundation paper piecing. We are doing all of the sections, uh, A through K, we're doing them all at once. So we're doing all the first piece on all of them and sewing them together. Then all the second piece on all of them and sewing them together. Uh, that I typically don't do because it can get confusing really fast. However, with this block, it's almost all the same size square. Uh, there's a little rectangle here and there. So there's not as many weird shapes to get confused on. So we are doing this a little bit differently than how I normally do it. But we are, we're pretty far. We will probably finish all of our sections tonight. Here's a finished section right here. We just have, I think, three more that are unfinished. So we'll probably finish those and we may actually start sewing all of these sections together. So I'm gonna flip you around and uh, we'll get going on here. All right, so here you can see, and this is what I think is so freaking crazy. This whole entire thing, I mean, it doesn't even fit on my frame here. All of this, when we sew the sections together, will go to the same width. <laughs> so can you imagine that this width the width of this is going to be the same as the height when we're done. That's just crazy town. Uh, but I, I was showing a picture. If you look at it sideways, ah, if it doesn't slip, you can start to see out oh, there it goes. You can start to see some of the pattern come through. But anyway, so we are not quite done with all of these. So um, I just set this all up here so we could take a look at where our progress is. But there's some here that we are missing pieces on. So I'm just going to set aside the ones that are done. So, which is, which is most of them now. Okay, so this one's not done. See, we, uh, we, we did D9. So D, this is uh, D, the D9 piece. This one, we have two more sections to do. So that one's not done. You know, all these other ones. Uh, so we got through the nine pieces. So anything that it has more than the number nine on it, you know, 10 through 13, um, we're not done with those, but every one that we, that doesn't have a nine, like this one only goes up to six, like G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, G6, we're done with that one. And you know, obviously you can just look and see too. All right, this one we're not done. We got an H10 and H11 to do. I think that's it. I think we are done. We're done with everything else. So we cranked out a lot yesterday which is awesome. So we just have these three left to go through the process. So I'm gonna flip them around. Yes, exactly, Gus. So this is similar to, let's just take a look at that because it's, it's, it is kind of interesting. So this is what we're working on now. And look at, 
look at these tiny pieces. So it looks like just a bunch of tiny squares, right? Which is, you know, we're starting to see some of that. These will all become squares once we uh, have, once we lose our top and bottom seam allowances, once they're sewn onto something else. They'll all become these squares. And uh, a lot of people have been comparing this to the horse block, which I know it's towards the end. Oh, there it is. I just saw it go by. There, right here. So the Happy Trails block. This is all just squares. And then this is appliqued on the, on the top when we're done. But for the, the bulk of it, it's all squares. So what's interesting is this uses a totally different technique to achieve those squares than, than this one. So for, for uh, the Happy Trails, these were actually all a pile of tiny little squares that we cut out and we just sewed together all of the little squares. There was no foundation or anything. Whereas this guy, the shared squares, that one, all of those little squares, we are sewing on to the foundation, which in a way uh, makes it maybe even a little easier because it's like, it's like a coloring book. We can, uh, um, we don't have to make sure that our line in the coloring book, like it's, it's like a coloring book, book versus drawing. So um, in a coloring book, the lines are laid out for us and we just have to color within the lines. So with foundation paper piecing, all of our pieces are laid out for us and we're just sewing exactly on, on the lines. So we didn't have that uh, ability in the horse, the happy trails block. We had to just hope that we are sewing the exact right size shape. Um, so a little bit more difficult. Uh, I think the difficulty for this may, be, may come when we're sewing it all together, but again, that's, you know, not any more difficult than the horse, the Happy Trails block. So yes, it is similar, but uh, different techniques. Just sewing all the squares together versus foundation paper piecing where we have this guide. All right, I'm flipping these guys around and we are gonna see what comes next. So all of these have gray squares and white squares. The white squares is, represent our, our white color fabric and the gray squares represent our tan fabric. There's only two colors in, in this block. So, all right, we are on the 10th section or the 10th um, yeah, segment of these. So uh, this needs a tan square. And if I remember right, uh, I think we counted and I'm gonna be one square shy for this whole piece, which is such a huge bummer. I'm gonna have to specially cut one uh, as we get to the end, I think, unless I count it wrong. So, all right, that's that's tan. Uh, this F10 is tan. And what do we got here? Oh, this one's a tan as well. Okay, so these are our three next things. Yeah, Jackie, exactly. That's what I'm a little nervous about, uh, matching these lines will uh, be the difficult part. Just because there's so many things, so many like vertical lines we gotta match up. And then we'll have the bulk of the paper there, which might make it a little difficult too. So it'll be interesting for sure. All right, I'm gonna get, so after we have our fabric out here, uh, I need to trim our seam allowance. So for example, this H9, that's the piece that we did last time. But if we fold this back, that is a lot of seam allowance. We only need our quarter inch seam allowance. So to get that, I'm going to cover up everything that we did before with the post, with my postcard here. Uh, just, you need a, just like a thick piece of paper, a manila envelope or something would work too, or like a political mailing as has been said here. Um, all right, so we're gonna cover up everything that came before. So that's the nine and everything before. And we're exposing our piece that we're working on now. In this case, it's H10, the 10 piece. And our postcard is going right on the line that divides our current piece and everything else that happened before. So I'm putting this right on the line. And then we are going to fold this back and that kind of reveals our seam allowance. Then I'm gonna take my add a quarter ruler. You can use a normal ruler, but this is an add a quarter and it, it has a little ledge here. I don't know if you guys can tell. Well, it has a little ledge that sticks out. There you go. And the width of that is a quarter of an inch. And this bump is going to, once we slide it up against this postcard, 
it's just going to stop for us because of the thickness of the postcard and our fabric fold. So the alternative to that is getting a ruler out and measuring a quarter inch, lining up the quarter inch line with your postcard and then, then trimming. But I'm telling you, even though this seems so silly, it is, it is so easy. I mean, I can do it literally with my eyes closed. Just bump this up. And then that's our quarter inch seam allowance there. So I'm going to, ah, I'm gonna wear the glove. I was gonna go without, but I, I, gotta, I gotta make the habit of wearing the glove. This is just in case, oh wow, my, I gotta switch this blade too. I know I keep saying that, but this is just in case I slip. Um, I'm not gonna cut myself. Uh, I have the safety on right now, but I'm not going to cut myself when I have that glove on. At least that's the theory, right? Okay, now that I've trimmed that, see now we have our perfect, perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Ooh, Carol, yeah, some soluble paper would be great. I wonder if you'd have to get soluble paper that you could still like run through the photocopier in theory to transfer this on. Um, and you wouldn't want it to tear as you're working with it. That's the trick. Like we're sewing through this paper and each, each, um, each time the needle goes into the paper, we're making like a perforation line. So that'd be fun to test a bunch of papers though. That would be pretty interesting. All right, we got our quarter inch seam allowance. We can fold this back. And now we're gonna take our piece and we're gonna match the right sides together along that line that we just cut so nicely. There, like that. And now that piece is ready to sew on the line here. Uh, so I'm gonna set the guy aside and let's, let's get these other two prepped and we'll sew them all at once. All right, F10 we're working on. Yeah, exactly. It would have to have the right amount of strength. I know that some people, I'm just using normal like photocopy paper um, normal printer paper. I know some people don't like that because they think it's a little thick, but I mean, I guess I haven't tried any thinner paper, but I would, like, I'm erring more on the side of being scared of the paper tearing on me because once your foundation is done, I mean, you know, you can tape it back together, but I mean, I'm relying on that foundation, right? So I, I don't want I don't want that to get wrecked. So anything thinner would kind of scare me. But like I said, I have not, I have not tried anything other than the printed paper. All right, this is our last seam allowance deal for this round. After this round, uh, um, two of these only have one more piece, which is awesome. And then we'll have one that needs a, a few more rounds. Okay, get all this stuff to the side. Okay, this piece is going to match up to this. Right sides together. It's hard to tell the right and wrong side of this fabric. All right, we are ready to sew. Now all we have to do is sew along that line and I'm also gonna sew into the seam allowance and we're just gonna chain piece these all together. So down to the machine. Oh, you've been using the foundation paper and it works great, easier to fold. Okay, so um, a special foundation paper. So I have never used uh, anything like that before. Um, that'd be, yeah, I'd be interested in, we do, I should get some so we can do a test of it sometime. Little test of uh, that versus just normal printer paper. All right, flipping that around. It might just be one of those things that I don't know what I'm missing until I'm, until I'm using it. All right, this will go pretty quickly. So Sally, I think if you can hear me, everything I think is working okay on my end tonight. So I would try maybe backing out of Facebook and coming back in. All right, 
only three little sections this time compared to like our nine sections we had yesterday or something. All right, let's move on to the ironing board or the ironing pressing mat, I suppose. All right, so let's snip these. Get rid of our chains. I don't think I kept that in order this time. All right, and this, this one's got the extra little threads on it. Uh-oh, look, I uh, sewed that in. Ah! That's funny. I, I did that more than once lately. I have not, got to get the seam ripper out. I've never done that before, except for this time and then one other time really recently. So I must not be paying close enough attention. So I'm just going to try and pick up these two. I hate that I have to do this because every time I sew through this paper, it's making more holes and makes it scary. I wonder if I can get away with it. No, there's, I have to sew within there yet. Oh, boo. Fine. I will sew that again. I think I might just leave what's already sewn there. We'll trim that and I'll, I'll just sew the entire length again. Grr. All right. Back, back to the machine. I didn't do that on any of the other ones today. No, that one's fine. That one's fine. Don't know what happened there. Sheesh. All right. Let's, oh, you know what I bet happened? I bet you I put it in right like this and uh, uh, it hit the feed dogs and flipped my little piece of paper over. I am still getting used to these machines a little bit, these um, other vintage machines. I've been using, um, you know, my, 1970s machine for so long that I don't I don't know the quirks of you know this is my 1937 sewing machine there we go that looks better <laughs> uh, learning all of the little foibles of it yet all right so let's press these I'm gonna finger press it first just to um, get that seam started and then we'll press over it. There we go. And that's one of the ones that we just need the 11 piece and then we're done with that guy. This is the one that we have a lot to do yet. Like three or four more pieces. It's coming along. This one is completely going to be made up of tiny squares. Yep, we got three more on, on him. And one more on this guy. Ugh, we're gonna have to cut that extra square yet tonight too. So annoying, one square short. Okay, let's see what's happening now. Um, all right, let's flip them all around. There's our middle one. All right, we're done with the 10s. We are on the 11s now. So let's see, I must have some little squares yet. Oh my gosh, did I run out of white squares too? How thought I just cut a whole pile more of those. Huh, maybe not. So, all right, let's, um, I'm not even gonna cut more squares. I'm just gonna sew, I'm gonna just sew these big strips onto the end. So this one, Let's see, okay, 11. I'm gonna sew the really big strips onto the ones that we're almost done with. So let's, let's put those two together. We'll do that strip. Here's a little shorter strip. I'm not hiding up here. Oh, I must've run out. Okay, and then this one, this one that's slightly smaller, I will sew onto this piece here, this 11. Okay, <laughs> that's kind of goofy. All right, let's, let's, um, we're gonna be trimming those, so it's okay that I have all that excess on. It's just funny that I ran out of that too. All right, now we're exposing the F11 piece. Doing all the 11s. 
pop that on. Then get my, my glovey on again. Okay. Fold that back, and here's where we'll just throw that guy on. I'll put him on top, just get him out of the way. Last piece on these two. All right, now this one I'm just gonna throw whatever giant piece I have laying around here. We'll throw that guy on there and, and trim it later. Same thing with this. Then I don't have to dink around and cut two extra um, or three extra little white squares. I do actually think I have a scrap in here. Ah, yes, this will work. So uh, in my little scrap pile here, um, I must have thrown away that a piece that's um, almost a square, but not quite so. Yeah, perfect. We'll throw him on there. Woohoo! Okay, that's great. So let's uh, let's sew those three. Okay. And some of these are going to have that big strip, but that's okay. Let's line that up again. Yay, last piece for this one. This, um, the, the lever that lifts and lowers the, the presser foot is on the side. And, it always uh, feels funny for me because I'm so used to having it uh, directly on the back. All right, next up, here I had a big long strip on here. We'll trim that off so it's not totally annoying. All right, those are our two that will be finished this round and then this filler here. All right, easy. So we'll just have a couple left on this last one to do. Just snip them right here, maybe. There we go. I do like the flat surface of this machine. My 1970s machine does not have this cool, big, flat surface. I really like that. Okay, to the mat, which I've of course crowded with all my stuff. Okay. Let's fold this guy. There, this one's not so big and annoying. We obviously have like tons of extra still, but we'll cut that off. This is the one we still need to work on. Oh man, you know what? Maybe I do have enough squares. Ha ha! Yes! Okay, so I definitely miscounted. Yay! Good, I only need one more of those. Okay, that makes me feel better. Ugh! That's a win for the day, right? <laughs> Alright, so here's my one that I did. Just that big extra piece that I'll trim off right now because that's, that's going to just get annoying. So I'm not going to trim it perfectly right now. I'm just going to grab my tiny scissors and make sure I have that extra seam allowance all the way around, which I do. There. Now I don't need that extra piece around. Cool! One more piece to go here, and I did only need one more of these, so that worked out perfect. Uh, that is our next piece, uh, is this tan, where we finished the F11, the 11 pieces. Uh, this is the only one that has more than 11 pieces. So this is a 12 and a 13, the F section here. So the 12 is tan, that's next, and then we need another white piece, and I'm just going to add on another floppy end, and that will get us there. Cool! Now it's kind of more 
like how I normally do foundation paper piecing where I work on one section. Like this is the F section I work on. Just the one section at a time, I go from my cutting area to the sewing to press, cut, sew, press, cut, sew, press in my little like circle that I got going on here. So now it's gonna feel a little bit more comfortable for me again, I think. You know, with our last two pieces. It's odd for me to work on so many pieces at once. But again, it is just because they're so similar. I'm not, you know, and I pre-cut all these pieces. Like that's unusual for me. Um, but they're all so much the same, like just these rectangles. I feel like I'm crooked. All right, this is actually a pretty good square for later. Let's let's use this as our square. Okay, done cutting that round. I'll put these up here this time. All right, uh, right sides together. There we go. Now we can just sew two little pieces that will go really quickly here. I'm pretty excited for Friday, you guys. It's it's Finish It Friday. Oh man, I moved this all over. Uh, it's Finish It Friday this week, which is the first Friday of the month. And it is September now, so we have a new Friday. Um, the first Friday of the month, I kind of stop what I'm working on and grab another project. In theory, a project that we don't have done yet, an unfinished project. Um, and we are going to be doing some embroidery on Friday for Finish It Friday, and, and I am excited for that. Some type, even. So we will draw out some text and stitch over it uh, for that. So I think that'll be fun. Oh, hope you feel better, Robin. Thanks for stopping by. All right, let's flip this. Yay, one more piece after this. Awesome. We have lots of time left, so we'll at least get started sewing these together. The last piece is the 13, and it's white, and we got it right here. So let's, we just have to trim our seam allowance. All right, actually, there is some prep work before we sew all these together. I do have to trim all the seam allowances away, so we will do that first. I'll take a little bit of time. So yeah, maybe we'll sew like one row together. We'll see, we'll see where we get. All right. So last piece. Let's do it. Yeah, Glennis, I'm not sure why you wouldn't have the chat feature. All right. There we go, that is it. All right, let's press that and we are done with our section. So I'll probably lay them out so we can just take a peek at them quick. Actually, we can just start trimming them maybe. Oh, did I, yep, I cut both sides off. We'll, we'll trim them and as we trim them, maybe put them in place. Oh, I'm not gonna have enough cutting board room to do that, I don't think. All right, well, anyway, that is our last piece. Uh, what comes next is trimming them. So uh, why don't we get started on that and uh, then I will set them to the side and then we will lay them all out here. I think that's gonna look really cool. Okay, so for trimming, I get my other ruler out, uh, not the add a quarter ruler anymore. Before I get too far, I'm gonna close up my seam ripper. That's tempting fate having that open. 
first of all, I don't want to seam rip anymore, and I don't want to stab myself with it. So, all right, let's trim. All right, so when we trim, we want to do a quarter inch away from our line, like the actual shape line, not from this edge. We don't want to trust that we cut that edge perfectly. We are going to measure a quarter inch from this line and uh, do that. Oh, it does kind of look like paint chips. Okay. So I got my um, ruler along that line. We are going to clean up that whole piece and it's just going to transform. It's really kind of impressive how like one little thing like trimming this makes it look really clean and finished right away. Get the scruff away. We'll get the size too. I'm lining this along the edge too just to make sure that I'm square when I trim that. Actually, we might just get this far trimming all these. One of those things you forget each one of these takes takes time each step. Ooh, trimming a lot off on that round. That's gonna be so pretty. Yeah, I suspect we might just get done trimming this and tomorrow we'll Tomorrow we'll start our assembling. We might want to just start tomorrow anyway, because that's like a whole new thing, assembling a foundation paper piece thing, and we might want to start start fresh on that. But here we go, let's take a peek. Ah, look how clean and perfect it is. Ah, that's the magic of foundation paper piecing, I think just looks so good and we're still gonna lose a quarter inch on the top and the bottom so it's gonna end up being just a cute little square uh, when we're done but there we go that is our most complex piece there i would say i'm gonna flip it over so i can read the letters then i'll put a little letters in, in, in a row here okay let's just keep going trimming all these up yeah this is definitely gonna take some time Oh, congrats! You got your crocheted elephant done, done. That's exciting. Yeah, be sure to post it once you get that tail on. How fun. Ooh, felt a little weird there. There we go. I, I put it, I put my ruler right on the edge. That would have been bad. I, I need to remember that quarter inch. I'm putting it on the quarter inch, not the... Not the edge of my ruler. Something felt off. Glad I caught that. That would have been, that had been bad. We would have lost a seam allowance then. So we do have a few pieces here that are like long and floppy pieces. I may glue those down just to kind of baste them to hold them in place basically um, because that's going to be tough cutting them if they're super floppy. I think it's going to be hard to match up and stuff later too. But there we go, there's our next piece. He's got a little white area there. Like this one for example. This one's pretty floppy. I might kind of lay it flat and then put a little dab of glue on the end here, I think, just to kind of make sure it stays centered uh, before I trim it, and then so it stays stays there later too. Yeah, I think I think that's the plan. I've never done that before. I've never had such a floppy piece in a section before. I don't think. I don't think it can hurt us. So it seems like a decent idea. I think. I'm actually going to turn the light on my sewing machine off. Oh, this is definitely one of those parts of the project that you just got to relax into and do. I mean, some people love this cutting and trimming stage, but 
I don't know. Not my favorite. And you know, it's not even that I don't like it. Like, it's not my favorite, not because of that. It's more that I always forget that it's part of the process. In my head, it's like, oh yeah, I just gotta trim those up. That's nothing. That's no time. But I forget, yeah, actually that is something that takes takes time to do. So I think I think I'm just more annoyed with this part of the process than anything. It's not that I don't like doing it. Although I don't like having to deal with super sharp blades and, and all that. So yeah, I'd rather pass. <laughs> um, oh, but I, I wouldn't want to miss how pretty and clean it looks all of a sudden. I do like that transformation. All right, so that guy's done. All right, here's one that I do want to glue. So I'm gonna get my little glue stick out. I'm gonna, I'm just literally gonna put a little nubbin on the paper. And I'm gonna just try and center this as I lay it down. I can kind of see through it. There we go. I think that's gonna be helpful for us. So there, now it's, you can use a pin too, but I like the glue because it lays flat. Oh, you glued all the floppy pieces when you made the trinkets quilt. Oh, makes them stay put. Okay, good. Uh, good, Nolene has done this before. Oh, look, I'm kind of looping it up. There we go. Maybe I should have done it from this direction. All right, let's trim that. And I can always re-glue that if it comes off, but this will be helpful, at least during this trimming stage. I think we have one other piece that's kind of floppy like this. God, I always hated the idea of using glue when doing quilting stuff. Like, I like the idea of like, oh, I'm not putting any anything on my quilt. I'm just sewing pieces together, you know? But ever since I started using it, um, I, I started just to give it a try, you know? We are trying different types of basting, which is basically holding something in place for a temporary time. And, you know, everyone was saying, oh, glue basting is great and whatever, and I finally gave it a try, and it is really kind of slick. <laughs> so, so I've been using it. There we go. I'm gonna just keep that glue there, but now we have, um, we were able to trim that really nicely, I think. All right, keeping on here. There are, I think it's through, a through K. I think K is, what, the 11th alphabet letter? So we have 11, 11 of these rows to do. <laughs> I find that funny that I know that. It's, like, I remember, <laughs> this is just so funny, uh, at least for me, uh, the letter I, I always remember that as being number nine. Because remember, like, when you're little and you'd have, like, a code like you'd and each each um letter of the alphabet would be given a number like the number uh within you know like letter a would be number one letter b would be number two for some reason i love those and i always remembered that the letter i was number nine so i for some reason that just in particular the i sticks out as a memory so So I can figure out K quickly. That'd be two more than nine. Oh, you did that all the time, Gretchen. I loved all that stuff. It felt, you know, it's why I like learning new things here too. It's just, um, it's like another little magic trick, another little uh, something that you can do, you know? All right, I'm going to put a glue dab here. I'm wondering if it'd be better to flip it around and do it. Might as well try it. So I'm going to, I'm still gonna put the glue on the paper though, I think. Dab it down. Okay, and now I'm gonna try and center it on the paper a little bit. All right. That'll work, I think. Oh my gosh, your aunt used to decode in World War II, similar to that. Oh wow, that's amazing. Gosh, that's interesting. 
Oh, Gina, I hope you're you're okay. I think I missed uh, I missed what's going on. All right, rotate. Yeah, I think. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say I think this is my only other floppy piece, but I just looked down and I have a floppy piece that's coming up next. So there must be there must be four floppy pieces at least. So it seems like these all have like mirror images of each other. Well, at least today it'll it'll be um, good to have this this um, trimming done. This would be annoying to have to do tomorrow, I think. Okay, there's the eye bit. Pretty. Oh, I'm excited to lay these all out. We're getting there. Ugh, actually, we got five more to do, so we're about halfway. Oh, that's only halfway. All right, let's put the dab of glue on this guy. Another flappy piece. Actually, there's a pile of flappy pieces. They're all flappy pieces except for like three. Okay, I, I was thinking that opposite. I was thinking there weren't a lot of floppy pieces. They're all floppy pieces. All right, that looks good. Keep wanting to put my edge of the ruler on on that line. Gotta catch myself before I do that. Oh yeah, I'm excited to lay this out. It's gonna be all clean and everything's gonna connect all nice, but it's still gonna be gigantic. It's gonna be so tall still, which is funny. Okay, four more left. Let's take a peek. All right, looking good. Oh yeah, this one's got a flappy one too. They all have flappies. Excited to see them again. We've got to go home a lot this summer, and they've come here um, to, and, or my brother has a bunch, and it's been a good summer of seeing family. I like it. <laughs> Man, I must have said that here. That's a classic word. <laughs> must have said that here before. Maybe not. Uh. All right, another flappity one. Oh, this one. It's glued down already. When did I do that? Oh, I must have never undid the glue. Well, that works. Oh yeah, two minutes ago. No, Nolene, Nolene said, uh, Gigungus noted, meaning it's been put into the dictionary of weird words that I apparently say here. <laughs> and I was thinking, man, if Gigungus is first getting in the dictionary now, I don't know. Oh, 
are we cooking for them? I don't know. That would be fun. We should. We haven't done a lot of, um, we haven't done, gosh, actually, I think we only grilled once this year. Isn't that horrible? It's been such a beautiful summer too. And we only grilled, um, once if the fall, I mean, like if the next week or the rest of the week ends up being as awesome as it was, um, like today, for example, then it would be nice to grill. Oh, zoop. Yep. <laughs> yep, Carol. Carol says zoop is my cutting word. Oh, I like that spelling too. <laughs> Z-Z-Z-H-O-O-P. Zoop. Things need sound effects. Oh, Stephanie. So Stephanie's saying, I hope the retiring embroidery kits are still available. So I do have some left. So the special is uh, kind of over right now, but I do still have some available. I just did a count. I think we have like nine or so of the zebra left, period. So um, they'll be available until the, until the last zebra is gone, basically. Then, then we won't have the zebra anywhere on the site anymore. And then it will be just, uh, we do have some, why did I just take my glove off? I'm not quite done yet. Um, then we'll just have the alligator and um, monkey. We'll have a few of those yet. But we will not, we won't be printing them again. Oh, your husband grills year round. Man, we did one year where we grilled all the time and I don't know what happened to that. I don't know why we haven't been doing that. Ooh, veggie kebabs, that sounds delicious. We made eggs once on the grill um, in a cast iron pan, that was kind of fun. This is the last one! We can set it up after this. Yay! Then we'll start fresh tomorrow. Um, oh, you're in Texas, so you don't have to do it in the snow. Yeah, <laughs> supposed to be just a little something extra when you gotta go out into the snow and do it, but you know, it was kind of fun. Yeah, tomorrow we'll start fresh and start sewing these together. I don't know how long that'll take. Probably, uh, let's see, tomorrow's Thursday. Jesus, Thursday already. Uh, I don't think we'll finish tomorrow. So this might be a Monday, gosh, maybe even a Tuesday finish. We'll just have to see. We're gonna have to pick a, a new block. Ah, that is it. Let's set this thing up. I wanna see it. Okay, here's the A piece. So A, we gotta go all the way at the top here so it fits. Okay, B. Now the edges should all match up too, because we have it all trimmed perfectly. Alright, where D go? Go way at the bottom. Ooh, that one has a lot going on. Okay. Oh, it's so cool! It's so neat seeing like this pattern develop. It needs to be E, F, here we are. Ooh, yeah, that's the fancy one. That's the one that has strips all the way down. E, F, G. But now the strips are going the other way. These are the mirrored ones of the ones above. Oh, it's cool! Man, it'd be neat if it ended up staying this tall. This would be a, like a, just a neat graphic wall hanging. J. Oh, fun, look at this one peek into there. All right, last one! There we are! I'm gonna just get you guys up even a little bit higher. So 
all we have to do now is sew that together. Oh, we didn't we didn't lose some of the verticalness um, just cutting off those seam allowances, but dang, it's kind of cool just like this. <laughs> it's still, I think, impressive that it's gonna end up being as wide uh, as it is tall. So it's only gonna end up, it's gonna like cut itself in half, really, isn't it? So it's only gonna end up being this big. So cool, cool, I'm very excited about it. Now let's, as we tilt, who maybe I can hold it up. As we tilt to the side, we can start to see what it might look like. There, kind of like that. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening here tonight. Yeah, it does look good big, doesn't it? It's just kind of fun. This would be like a neat kind of wall hanging quilt just like this, I think. All right, hello, hello. So I'm excited about this. So I think, um, well, tomorrow, obviously, we'll start sewing these together. And that's where our process changes a little bit. We're going to have to work hard, I think, to match up these seams. We'll, we'll uh, get my pins out, and we'll do that whole foundation paper piecing matching up uh, system. We'll see how that goes. So that'll be the plan for tomorrow. Some of these will definitely be easier than others. Uh, it doesn't look like everything matches up perfect. Sometimes it just runs into a strip. That will be um, that will be ideal. Uh, but there is those couple of rows where every single thing matches up. Uh, so that's where our focus will be to just try and get like real nice straight lines uh, that are made up of tiny squares. So that'll be tomorrow. And then Friday, which is two days from now already, uh, we'll be working on it. Here's that piece here. It's finish it Friday. And I'm going to be, I found this cleaning up. This is uh, a piece where we just did a test of stitching uh, with all the different uh, thicknesses of thread. So it's like one strand of floss, two strands of floss, three, just to see what different thicknesses uh, look like. So it's kind of like a little floss guide. So what we're going to do is I'm going to finish it up. I'm going to tuck in the threads. Uh, I never tuck those in. And we're going to write like floss guide or something up here or floss thickness chart or something. That, that's maybe good. And then I found this vintage hoop and we'll frame it in there so that like the top will be the title. Like we'll make it pretty. We'll draw it out. Uh, we'll, we'll just play around. We'll sketch on paper. And then when we have something that we like, we'll trace it and um, stitch it up. And I think this, that would be just like a, be a nice reference just to have around, like just to pick, eh, what do I want this to kind of look like? Do I want a thicker line, a thinner line? Let's choose how many strands to use. Or if we want something special, like if we want pearl cotton floss, like pearl number five, you know, I think this will be a good guide just to have around. Uh, so that is the plan for, uh, for Friday. So awesome. Thank you guys again for joining me tonight. I will get this up, this video replay up on uh, Penguin and Fish movies on YouTube. So you can check it out there. That's sometimes a nice way to watch the replays versus here on Facebook because you can scroll and and uh, do all that. So be sure to subscribe over there. And uh, here also, if you're not, if you haven't liked the Penguin and Fish page, be sure to do that. And uh, I will see you guys here tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.